Hey, in today's lesson, I'm going to teach you how to speak English the right way. That's right. I'm going to help you sound like me, a native English speaker. Are you ready? Well then I'm teacher Tiffany. Let's jump right in. All right. Here's the very first situation. We see this woman sitting on her sofa looking for a movie, but if you had to describe the situation like a native English speaker, what would you say? Well, the very first thing you could say is this. I saw that she was scrolling through the videos on her tablet. Now this expression scrolling through on the video, you saw that she was doing this with her hand. Maybe you do the same thing with your cell phone. When you're looking through images or through pictures, you are actually scrolling through. So after me scrolling through. Excellent. Very good. So again, you can describe this situation by saying, I saw that she was scrolling through the videos on her tablet, or you could say this, she's debating which movie she should watch today. Again, she's debating. She's thinking about, ah, maybe I should watch this movie. Ah, may maybe this movie or maybe this show. She's debating, trying to figure out which option would be the best option. So after me debating, excellent. So again, you could describe the situation by saying she's debating which movie she should watch today. Or you could say this, the woman is trying to decide which show she wants to binge watch today. Now this is something that I love again. I'll say it binge watch. Excellent. Now this is a term that we use binge or binging something. For example, I love watching Korean dramas. You know that I speak Korean for my Korean students and young and I love watching Korean dramas on Netflix. Maybe you do too, but sometimes I can't hold back. I can't stop myself. And instead of just watching one episode, I want to watch each and every episode in one sitting. Well, binging, that means to watch everything at one time. You sit down, you get some popcorn, you get some food and you watch the show back to back each episode. In English, we say binging or binge watch. So again, in describing this situation, we could say, and you could say the woman is trying to decide which show she wants to binge watch today. Makes sense, right? Okay. Now there's another way you can describe the same situation again, helping you understand how you can actually speak like a native English speaker. Here we go. You could say none of the movie titles caught her attention. Now I'll say this again, caught her attention. Now this is an expression that we as native English speakers use all the time. And if you want to sound like a native English speaker, you need to also start using this expression. So what does it mean? Caught her attention to catch someone's attention. For example, right now I have your attention. Hey, yeah, you're watching me, right? You're listening to this lesson. You're watching this lesson, right? So I have your attention, but I have to make sure the lesson is interesting, right? And informative in order to catch and hold your attention. So catching someone's attention, meaning it means to have something interesting, present something interesting that holds someone's attention that causes someone to be interested in it. Right? So none of the movies she kept scrolling through because they weren't catching her attention. Make sense. All right. Now watch this, the same situation. You can also say she finally found a show that looked intriguing after me looked intriguing. Yes. Very good. Now intriguing just means something that's wow. 
Very interesting. Mm, I think I want to know just a little bit more about this. That's what intriguing means. It causes you to be interested, to want to know more about it. So as the woman was going through and scrolling through the movie titles, she finally found a show that looked intriguing. So that first situation, now you can describe it using five sentences, five example sentences that native English speakers use in real life. So you can speak English the right way. But what about this situation? This is a different situation. We have a young man here. And if we wanted to speak English and describe this the right way, we could say the young man was contemplating his next move. Again, the young man was contemplating, thinking about thinking deeply, trying to decide his next move. Again, look at the video, look at the situation. He's thinking hard. His hands are moving. Mm, what should I do next? The young man was contemplating his next move. What about this though? We could also say, ah, he couldn't make up his mind about the job offer. Remember, we're talking about speaking English the right way, like a native English speaker. And for this situation, you could also say he couldn't make up his mind about the job offer. Now, the expression make up your mind, it literally just refers to making a decision, making a choice, choosing something, saying, Hey, I got this. This is my decision. I'm done making up your mind. Imagine. Okay. You all know that I love good food, right? Imagine you go to a Mexican restaurant, Woo -wee! all my Mexican students. You know, I love Mexican food and you walk into the restaurant and there are so many different options. Things look so good. There are burritos, there are tacos, and you just can't choose one. You just can't make up your mind because you want everything. You caught it right again. Make up your mind just means to make a decision or to make a choice to choose something. And that's what we're saying about this individual. He can't make up his mind. We could also say this though, ah, he was feeling a bit overwhelmed because he had so many options. He was feeling a bit overwhelmed again, a little stressed, right? You you're a little bit overwhelmed. Ah, I, I, I can't figure out what, what to do. I, I don't know if I should go left or go right. I, I'm a little stressed. I, I, it's too much for me. I am overwhelmed. When things feel like they're too much for you to handle, when you feel stressed, you can say, I feel a bit overwhelmed. Again, an expression and words that native English speakers use speaking English the right way. So you can say he was feeling a bit overwhelmed, or you could say this, his boss told him that it was a pressing matter. So he was trying to figure out the best solution. Now, this is a very important expression that native English speakers use, right? Pressing matter. I want you to imagine this, right? If you're watching this, uh, I want to show you visually. If you're listening to it, don't worry, follow along. Imagine your hands putting them together and then pushing. You're literally pressing against each other, right? The top hand and the bottom hand, right? Right and the left hand are pressing against each other, right? So when we say a pressing matter, it means something that is putting pressure on you or on the company or on your team. Something that is super important. Meaning, Hey, we have to stop everything else because this is the most important. It's putting pressure on us. We have to get it done. There's a deadline. It's super important. There's a pressing matter again, putting pressure on you, on your team or on your company. In English, we say a pressing matter. Hey, listen, this is a pressing matter. So I need you to stop everything else that you're doing. 
Make sense? All right. So again, looking at this situation, his boss told him that it was a pressing matter. Look at this individual. Look at his eyes. Look at his hands. It's like he's really trying to figure out a solution. Make sense? Now, there's another way you can describe this situation in English. You could say, I could see that he was racking his brain, trying to figure out what caused the problem. Now, racking his brain again, this is just, this is an idiom and it just means really thinking deeply, thinking hard, trying to find a solution. You're really focused. Okay. Wait a minute. If I do this, this will happen. Okay. But if I do that, this will happen. And again, you're trying to figure something out, trying to find a solution in English. We say you are racking your brain makes sense, right? So again, this individual, he is trying to figure something out. We can say he's racking his brain, thinking very hard, thinking very deeply, trying to figure something out. Now, what about this situation? Again, learning how to speak English the right way. Situation number three, we have two young men. They look like they're in their twenties and they are just jumping, looking like they're having a wonderful time jumping in the water. But how can you speak English the right way about the situation? Well, first you could say the ice cold water sent chills up his spine when he jumped in. Now, Another expression we use all the time in English, sending chills up your spine. Now your spine refers to your backbone, right? Your back, the spine, right? And I want you to imagine something, something scares you, right? And you feel like the hairs on your body kind of bing, right? Or all of a sudden you feel like these chills going through your body when you get scared or when something happens that shocks you, right? We say it sends chills up your spine, like <gasps> that sudden feeling. So when these young men jumped into the water and they realized it was ice cold, all of a sudden it was like, ah, oh my goodness, the water is freezing. It sent chills up his spine. But what about this? We can describe the situation like this. The two boys wanted to cool off. So they jumped right into the water. Now cooling off, that just means, whew, oh my goodness, you're feeling hot. And because you're hot, you want to cool down or cool off. And in this situation, the boys want to cool off. Hey, it's hot outside. It's summertime. Let's jump into the water and we can cool off. We won't be hot anymore. Or we could say this. They jumped in as if they didn't have a care in the world. Now having a care in the world, it means a hey, everything's okay. I'm not worried about a thing. So when someone doesn't have a care in the world, it just means they aren't worried about anything. So if someone says, Hey, how are you? How have you been? You can say, you know what? I don't have a care in the world. Everything is gravy. You remember that one? That's slang. Everything is gravy just means everything's good. So we can say the same thing about these individuals, these young men jumping into the water, or we could say he let out a loud shriek as he jumped into the water. Now a shriek is just a loud, like a scream, right? Like, ah, right. <laughs> a little loud for you. Don't worry. You can say shriek shriek just means a scream. Again, you're speaking English and using the right way, using English the right way, right? Describing this situation. You could also say this, the boys realized how strong the current was when they jumped into the water. Now the current, right? When we say the current, I want you to imagine not jumping into a swimming pool, right? But remember in the situation, the boys were jumping literally into what looks like a river, right? And when they jumped into the river, when you have natural bodies of water underneath the water's moving, look at the water. If you're watching this, the water is moving. Even before they jumped in, the water was turning, right? That's because underneath the water is pushing 
forward or backward. Again, we refer to that movement as the current, the flow of the water, right? In English, we say the current and sometimes the current can be nice and slow, not too strong. While other times it can be extremely strong and it can push you and force you to move a certain way. So again, the boys realized how strong the current was when they jumped into the water. We see the current was extremely strong, but what about this situation? This situation is also very interesting. Look at this beautiful couple. Now, again, in trying to speak English the right way, how would a native English speaker describe the situation? Well, first we would say the two lovebirds looked amazing on their wedding day. Now love birds after me, love birds. Yes. Good. I love it. Now we just say a couple that's extremely in love. We call them love birds. Very simple, right? Maybe you and your husband or you and your wife or you and your girlfriend or you and your boyfriend, your love birds. Ooh, you absolutely love him, right? We'd say you are love birds. So to describe the situation, we would say the two love birds looked amazing on their wedding day. Or we could say this, they looked like two peas in a pod. Now this is an idiom, two peas in a pod. Think about the food. We have green peas in America, and I'm sure you might have it in your country as well. And peas come in what is called a pod. They're next to each other and they're grouped together, right? So when we say two individuals look like two peas in a pod, it means they look like they are meant to be together. Two peas in a pod, just like this man and this woman, they look like two peas in a pod. Or we could describe the situation like this. His love for her was written all over his face. Oh, you could tell how much this man loved her. It was written all over his face. Another idiom that just means by looking at you, I can tell, Ooh, I can tell how you feel by looking at you because your facial expression says it all. His love for her was written all over his face. Or you could say, listen, no one could deny how much they loved each other. Deny, deny. Now this just means no one could say anything otherwise. No one could say, uh, uh, nope, they don't love each other. No one could deny why, because it was a fact. Hey, you can't disagree with this deny. No, that's not true. You can't disagree with this. They love each other. Look at them. They're so in love. No one could disagree with no one could deny how much they loved each other. And finally, what about this? If you're describing this situation using English the right way, they gazed longingly into each other's eyes. Ooh, gazed longingly. I'm going to show you what this looks like. And again, I'll explain it for those listening to the audio version. Gazing means to look at someone or to look at something and not look at anything else. For example, right now I'm gazing at you. Mm, you're beautiful. Mm, you are handsome. I am looking at you right now. I am gazing, right? Now gazing longingly, it means you're looking at the individual and there's a sense of desire. Like, oh man, I wish I could be with him or I wish I could be with that individual gazing again, looking at something for a long period of time and just staring at it. And then longingly with a sense of desire and hope gazing longingly makes sense, right? So again, the man and the woman, they gazed longingly into each other's eyes. Now that makes sense, right? Again, you're learning how to speak English the right way, like a native English speaker. But if you have this situation right here, Oh, I love this. A family eating together, smiling. It, it might be Sunday morning, but how can you speak English the right way about the situation? You can say they were about to throw down. <laughs> now I want to teach you a little bit of slang. Hey, you got to speak like a native English speaker. 
So again, in this situation, they're eating together, right? They're making their plates. So what does throw down actually mean? Well, throw down means you are about to eat your food, consume all of your food and completely eat everything in front of you. It means you see there's a good meal and you are about to woo, eat that meal and be happy. You are about to throw down. So for example, on Thanksgiving day, my mom mm, made an amazing meal, delicious. So I made my plate and woo, wee, that thing was, mm, it looks good. And I said, I am about to throw down meaning I am about to consume and eat everything on this plate. Makes sense, right? Again, it's slang, but it's good for you to know. Here we go. So again, they were about to throw down, or you could say this. Everyone was looking forward to diving into the delicious meal diving into. Now I want you to think about swimming, right? You dive into the water, right? When you dive, you go directly into the water. So when we say dive into a meal, we're saying you are going to be focused and going directly into that meal, focusing on that meal, not anything else, just eating that meal, diving into. And again, you can tell that they were about to dive into, to go right into the delicious meal. But you could also say this. The children loved to eat their grandmother's scrumptious food. Again, you're learning how to speak English the right way, using the right expressions, idioms, and words and expressions that English speakers use, native English speakers. So what does this word scrumptious actually mean? Scrumptious just means extremely delicious. Your mom's food. Maybe your dad's food. Think about your favorite food. Mm, just thinking about it makes your mouth water. Scrumptious, extremely delicious. So the children love to eat their grandmother's scrumptious food. Or you could say this, the little girl said that she was going to devour all of her food. Again, we're describing the same situation using English the right way. So what does devour mean? Devour literally means to dive in, to throw down, to consume everything. I am about to devour this cake. I'm about to eat each and every part of this cake. In English, we say devour. Excellent. So again, describing this, they were going to devour the food. The little girl was going to devour all of her food. But what about this to describe the situation? You could say the woman was trying to serve her husband, some of the fruit to serve her husband. Now this might be done in your culture as well, where the woman serves her husband, depending on where you're from, many cultures have it set up to where the woman serves the man serving just means you prepare something and you give it to the person you serve them. Hey, I'll do it for you. Here you go, right? Serve someone. So again, the woman was trying to serve her husband some of the fruit. Now, again, in today's lesson, you learned how to speak English the right way about five different situations. I hope you enjoyed the lesson and I hope to talk to you in the next one. Don't forget if you want to receive my free English newsletter via email each week, three times a week, all you have to do is hit the link right in the description and I will talk to you in the next lesson. You still there? <laughs> you know what time it is. Ain't nothing changed. It's story time. Hey, I said it's story time. <laughs> All right. So. What I want to do is tell you a story. Some of you might know this story. It's something that happened to me when I first went to South Korea, but I'm also going to use some of the words and expressions that you learned today. So you know that I love good food, right? But prior to going to South Korea, I had never tasted any type of Korean food. Now I love Korean food, but I didn't know what Korean food was when I first went to Korea. 
So I remember landing in South Korea. The airport was absolutely beautiful, right? I got picked up by our uh, representative from the institute that I was going to be working at. And so we're all in the car, in the van actually, driving to the institute. We're all meeting each other. We're, we're new missionaries, new English teachers, and we were excited, right? But we were also quite hungry because it had been a long flight. So we arrived at the institute and it was nighttime. So we just got a snack, right? We didn't get a full meal. But the next day we woke up, we went through our training, right? We went through our training. They gave us breakfast and we were all looking forward to lunch because we knew lunch was going to be nice because we were all super hungry. We were going to devour the food, right? We were going to throw down. So lunchtime came and we went to the cafeteria area. And you could tell it was written all over our faces that we were looking forward to a good meal. So we walked up to the area where we were supposed to get our food. Now, remember, we hadn't had Korean food before, right? We only knew the food of our individual countries. And many of us were Americans. There were some British individuals and some South Africans. So I remember walking up to the front of the area with my plate in my hand. And I saw things that I recognized, but I also saw things that I didn't recognize. And at that point, I wasn't necessarily ready to try something new because I was starving, right? So I said, okay, let me get the things that I know. So I got different things that I knew. And then I saw what I thought was pasta. I said, oh, yes, I am about to throw down. So I loaded my plate with what I thought was pasta, right? I put it on my plate and then I added some other vegetables and some other things that they had there. So I sat down at the table with the other missionaries and other English teachers that had come. And, you know, we said prayer. I'm a Christian. And we said prayer. And I mean, literally, my mouth was watering. So I took my fork. And I started eating some of the vegetables. Everything was seasoned very well. Koreans can cook really well. And then I said, oh, baby, oh, baby, this pasta, because it had this special sauce on it. So I took my fork and I stuck it into the pasta. And I said, wait a minute, this pasta is a little bit thicker than I'm used to. I said, but it's okay, I'm hungry. And I stuck it in what I thought was pasta and I put it in my mouth and I started chewing. I said, mmm. No, <laughs> I didn't say it out loud, but I said, this is not pasta. You see, in actuality, it was tapoki, right? Um, tapoki is rice cake, basically. It's kind of like rice cake. It's like a rice that is put in a certain form, right? And it's extremely chewy. Now, just to explain, Americans in general, we are not used to extremely chewy things on our dinner plates. We have, of course, candy, but there aren't too many things in our food categories that include chewy food, right? They include chewy, right? They're not really chewy. And I didn't want to offend anyone, so I continued to eat it. I didn't spit it out. But I said, I was talking to myself, I said, what I won't be doing is eating any more of this. This is not pasta. I thought it was pasta, but it wasn't. So I said, I won't be eating this again. Fast forward 10 years, four years, three years, the pokey became one of my favorite Korean dishes. <laughs> In the beginning, because it was something that I was not familiar with, I thought it was pasta and it wasn't. But because it was something I wasn't familiar with, I said, no, I don't want it anymore. But living in Korea for almost 10 years and eating it more, and more, all of a sudden, it started to become one of my favorite Korean dishes. What's the message? As you're learning English, sometimes you're going to learn something or see something that you think is too difficult, too hard, and you don't want to keep going. Don't stop. Keep moving forward. Keep trying. Keep reviewing. Keep studying. And what will happen to you will be the same thing that happened to me. Not only will you start liking what you're learning, your English will improve and you'll be much better than you were before. Hope you enjoyed this story and maybe you also tried something, some type of food that you weren't uh, really fond of in the beginning, but in the end you loved it. Let us know in the comment section. I'll talk to you in the next lesson.